Hey everybody, it's Lagdemon here from Lagdemon Craft, and I thought we would take a look at a little bit of uh, game development in uh, in Unreal Engine 4, and uh, and a little bit about how uh, <clears throat> how 3D games are put together, and uh, perhaps over a series of videos here we will uh, we will build a game. Now this is the uh, the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, uh, launcher here and as you can see right here I am currently downloading version 4.16.2 and that's installing and I think that's the one we're going to use uh, I've got an older version here um, but I think we'll try out this uh, this new version for this video series so uh, as soon as that's done uh, done downloading I'll uh, I'll get right back to you here and we'll launch up the game engine and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, so 4.16.2 has finished installing and uh, so let's uh, let's launch it and uh, and start a new project here. And uh, So what I think I want to do is uh, instead of sitting down and planning out a game and storyboarding it and figuring out all the details, I think what we'll do is we'll jump in, we'll create a project and we'll just start assembling a game over a little bit at a time. I don't know how many videos this will go for, but we'll uh, we'll work on it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll just keep plugging away at it, and we'll see what we come up with. And certainly, you can put comments uh, in the uh, in the comment section below the video, and uh, give me suggestions on where the game should go, what direction it go. I'll read all those. I'll look at them closely, and uh, and we'll see where the game takes us. Um, I think that's just kind of fun to do, and since we don't have a deadline, we don't have to produce it for anyone. It's just something we're doing for fun. Great. <clears throat> don't know why it didn't already uh, have access. Oh, because I installed a new one, and this is the first time I'm running it. So we'll create a new project. Uh, now... Third person, first person. So you got all these different project types. And I guess I'll start by telling you a little bit about this screen. Uh, we're not going to work with C++ just yet. We can add C++ to it later if we want. Um, but we're not going to start off by creating a C++ project. We're going to create a blueprint project and, and initially do all our work using what are called blueprints. If you don't know what those are, I will, uh, I will talk about them as we go through and show you what blueprints are and how you program it. Um, these different uh, types of games give you a starting point. They they give you something to uh, to work with uh, in your uh, in your game. And the two I like the most are first and third person. Um, I'm I've been thinking about that and going back and forth. And I think what we'll do is we'll start with a third person game because it's very easy to turn the third person into first person. And, and move it back and forth. And that's one of the first things I think we'll do is we'll, we'll create a switchable first person, third person rig for this, uh, for this guy. And of course, down the road, we will replace the mechanical man with a, uh, a good model that looks really good uh, that we'll produce using a variety of tools I've got. I'll cover the tools and the pipeline and, and how things uh, happen at some point in time. So I think what we're going to call this project is just, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, um, maze crawl or something. We can always uh, call it something else later. But I'm thinking what we'll do initially is it'll be like an indoor game of some kind where you, you run through a series of, uh, of mazes and obstacles and uh, accomplish various tasks. So that'll be relatively simple. We won't have to deal with a big open world and the complexities of that. And eventually we might get to doing some open world stuff. So let's create the project. And uh, let this come up. Um, I will tell you something about Unreal Engine 4 uh, in terms of computer resources. Uh, I was able to run it reasonably well on a uh, PC with 8 gigabytes of RAM and uh, a quad processor and a uh, low-end video card. But it did have a, a video card with uh, 
uh, with about a gig of memory in it, I believe. Uh, now I'm running it on a machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a video card with 8 gigabytes of memory. So things run much better in this condition. So this is, uh, this is the editor. And uh, the editor allows you to uh, move around and even fly around inside of it. And, uh, and look at the game and game pieces from different angles. Uh, this is where you piece the game together. You put all the, the pieces in place. You can, uh, you can move uh, the various pieces around, like this, uh, like this character here. We can move him up and down, around, move him position wherever we want. Now, he's in-game. Uh, there is a thing over here called the Game Start, which spawns in your main character, and we'll get to talking about that. But initially, because we want to work on him, we're going to work on him here in this uh, in this mode with him in-game. I'll show a little bit about how this plays. Uh, this is the starter scene for third person. Uh, you got a character right here, uh, a little mechanical man, and he's all rigged up. He's animated. Uh, you can move him around. You can run. You can jump, um, and so forth. Jump up on obstacles. Well, I jumped right over that one, and I jumped over it again. Let's see if we can run and jump onto it. Nope. <laughs> okay, he's got a real high jump rate. There we go. Nope. Here we go. There. We're on it, finally. So those are kinds of things you can tune, how high they jump, uh, and so forth, and we'll, uh, we'll get into uh, all those details as we move along. Um, I think what we're going to probably do first is, is work on this guy uh, and, uh, and, and see what we can do with, with setting him up for first and third person. So uh, I'm going to gather some things together here, and I will be right back. So I think the first thing that we're going to do is uh, is work on this uh, work on this character, and uh, to do that we're going to go in here into the content into blueprints. We're going to open up the third person character script, and this here is the blueprint. And in the viewport tab over here, we can see all the components that this character has. <clears throat> it's camera and a camera boom. Now. We're going to want to switch this between first and third person mode, but first I want to set up this so that this operates a little differently. I want to be able to mouse wheel this in and out, and what's going to happen is the camera, as you mouse wheel it in, when it gets to a certain point, it's going to switch into first person mode. When you mouse wheel out, it'll switch back into third person mode. So uh, to do that, we're going to take a look here at the blueprints. Uh, and the blueprints are right here, the event graph. So over here, well, first of all, over here in settings, mm, project settings, down here on this side under input, we have these action mappings and axis mappings. I've already created one here called camera position. Uh, all you do is click on the plus, uh, you add a, or well, you could click on this plus here and it creates a new action mapping. You give it a name and you choose what it is. This is the mouse wheel axis with a scale of one. And actually, I want to reverse it and I will show you why. I'm going to make that a negative one. Um, it just makes the, uh, the math a little bit easier in here. And uh, oh, hold on, I'm going to delete something. Okay. So, to do this, we need that camera position event. So, camera, camera position. And the one we want here is the event. This is going to fire. This event will fire whenever we roll the mouse wheel. The other thing we need is this uh, is this camera boom because we need to access some items on it and the two things that we need to access first we need to get the uh, the length of the camera boom we need to know what its current length is and we're going to need to set its current length we need to do both of those and so we're going to set it now what we want to do is whenever this triggers we want to take the camera length arm length and add some value to it and make the new target length that and that might be a negative number 
So what we want is a variable. And over here on the left-hand side, under variables, we can click this and we're going to talk in, type in sensitivity. And what we're going to make this is we're going to call it mouse wheel sensitivity. So this tells us what the mouse wheel sensitivity will be, how quickly it moves in or out, and this will be something we can set in some sort of configuration so a person can, uh, can do it on the screen. It doesn't have to be done in code. We can actually modify this and we'll be able to save it as part of the game settings saves. Uh, having created that variable, we're now going to compile and we'll give it a default value of about 10. Okay. Now, what we want to do is take this axis value. This axis value will be either 1, 0, or negative 1. It'll be 0 if you're not clicking on the mouse wheel, if you're not moving it. It'll just be 0. If it's 1, I've reversed it by setting that scale. So if it's 1, it means you're, uh, you're pulling it back. You're rolling it backwards. And if it's uh, minus 1, you're pushing it forward. That's opposite of what it is. But that's what it'll come out here because of that negative scale factor that I set in the axis settings. So we're going to get this axis value and the first thing we want to do is multiply it by something. So we're going to multiply a float times a float and what we want to multiply it by is this mouse wheel sensitivity. Did I set this to integer? I certainly did. We're going to multiply it by this. Uh, oh, I made that a float. This is a float and that's a float and so I need to make this a float. I'm sorry. I knew something looked funny there. Now you notice the color was different on these little icons. That's what immediately keyed me that I had a, a type problem there. So we'll save that again. I'll save it. It's still got a 10. Um, so we're now multiplying this float by this mouse wheel sensitivity. Now if this value coming out of here is 1, we will get 10. If it's negative 1, we'll get negative 10. And what we want to do is set the arm length to what it currently is plus and I'm going to break this link. I'm going to put this link on the bottom. We want to add these two values together and set them to that arm length. And that's real simple and basic. That is how you that is a way you do blueprints. Now You'll notice that these have nice boxes around them. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. This is uh, this is really important to keeping things reasonably documented. I'm just going to select all of these here, and I'm going to press C for comment, and I'm going to type in mouse wheel event positions camera uh, sets camera boom length <clears throat> so we've created a blueprint let's compile let's save and let's play it and see what happens so as I mouse out my camera moves back I can move quite a ways as I mouse in there we go I can mouse in and I keep going oh you know what I forgot something because I can keep mousing out. I can, uh, there's some sort of limit on the actual boom length. So let's cancel that. I did forget one little piece. <clears throat> I'm going to spread this out a little bit. Move this over. I'm going to break this pin. I'm going to put here a clamp function. And I want to clamp a float. And the value I want to clamp is this the, this va resulting value here of adding these two. And I want to set a minimum and a maximum. And I think a minimum of 100 is good and a maximum of 500. Now, roughly speaking, based on the scale of the character, these numbers are centimeters. Uh, that's kind of how they scaled things. So it's 100 centimeters back, uh, which is about a meter. And this is... 500 centimeters back, which is about 5 meters back. That's probably sufficient. Let's add this in and let's see how this does now. We'll compile and save and let's play. So I'm going to mouse back and that's as far as I can go. That's that's probably far enough. 
Uh, we can make that adjustable too. In fact, maybe what I'll do is set those clamp settings on a variable so that uh, so that they can be adjusted, uh, perhaps not in game by the player, but uh, so that it's something we can adjust more easily. So let's escape out of that. And uh, excuse me, I bumped my microphone here. Um, let's set these to variables. So this min and max, let's promote it to a variable and promote this one to a variable. And now they're called <laughs> new variable zero and new variable one, very clever. So we'll just click on here. Uh, we'll make this uh, uh, min camera distance. And we'll make this one max camera distance. We'll compile and save. And it picked up the values we originally set in there. So it's uh, for this one here, it's 100, and for this one, it's 500. The 100 is probably good. Let's move it back a little bit. Let's move it back to 10 meters or 1,000 centimeters and see how, uh, see how that looks. So now we can move back and 10 meters as far as we can go. Yeah, and we can scroll in. Now... It seems like I have to do a lot of scrolling to move back and forth, so maybe 10 was a little too slow. So let's go to our mouse wheel sensitivity and let's boost this up. Let's double it to 20 and see how that feels. And hit play. And that feels considerably better. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, I still have to do a fair amount of twirling but it, at least it seems to, to to move on to to move along and and get there so kind of goes in jumps uh, I'm not too uh, not too thrilled about that um, uh, we might be able to do something with rate later on but this will be good enough for now um, and then I'm gonna want to detect when when somebody's at this minimum and they push further and they try to push in by rolling the mouse wheel while they're at the minimum. I'm going to want to detect that. So we're going to do another one over here. And we'll do it right up here. And uh, actually, so when we get this this arm length, um, just pull this out a little bit. Um, So when we get this uh, when we get this arm length signal through here, we want to do something else with it based on whether or not we're equal to this minimum when the signal comes in. So we want to in that case. <clears throat> there's a couple of ways we could go about this. We could create an event off of this and put it in another section. Maybe that's what we'll do. top of my head I'm not remembering how you create a oh maybe it's like this oh that's right what we want to do is create an event up here it was a custom event add custom event so here we go we're gonna call this uh, um, first person mode switch first I'm going to call it first third first third mode switch that'll be good so this is the event that's going to switch between first person and third person and what we're going to do is detect here coming off of this we're gonna say uh, let me expand this a little bit we're gonna put a branch and we're gonna put a condition where uh, 
this value here equals, and it's a float equals, and we want this min camera distance. So if we are in fact at the min camera distance, this will be true here. And if it's true, we want to call this event first, third, camera mode switch. There we go. And that's how you do a custom event and it keeps your wiring really neat. So all this is saying is we, we, we're scrolling in, scrolling in, scrolling in. We hit that boundary, that, that mode, and it fires this switch up here, um, and which we're going to work on next uh, in a few minutes after I uh, do a little checking on a few things. So I will be back, hopefully, in a flash. Okay, so <laughs> I think I have a little bit of a mistake in my, uh, in my logic here. Um, we don't want to trigger this uh, whenever this is equal to the min. What we want to do is trigger it, uh, trigger it every time the mouse wheel moves, but we only want to switch according to whether we're coming into or out of the min. Uh, this could be a little bit of a tricky logic. I've had to think about it a little bit here, but Basically, what we want to do is if you're mouse wheeling in and you hit that min, you're just at the min. If you're already at the min when you mouse wheel in, then we want to trigger this. So I'm going to have to think about this a little bit more, I think, and uh, perhaps we will uh, move on to some other things here. Uh, we do have that part of it working. Um, I'm going to go uh, double check it here, uh, having removed those, make sure everything's working fine. We can mouse in when we hit that, mouse out, mouse in. So yeah, so we have to detect that we're mousing in at the time and that we're at the min already when we mouse in. So we probably have to detect this a little bit earlier than right after setting it. Um, and uh, and pick up the event first and uh, and trigger this. So we'll uh, we'll come back to this. I think uh, uh, doing this. Uh, uh, perhaps we'll move on to some other more game related kind of stuff and just see what we can uh, we can do moving around. But uh, that's all the time that I uh, think that I have for this particular kind of introductory video, kind of getting us going. Uh, you saw a little bit about uh, uh, the blueprint scripts and, and how they work and a little bit of a tour around Unreal Engine. Um, the uh, uh, things that you can do in it. Um, this little uh, little starter scene here is a good place to test things out and see that things are working. I think in the next video we will uh, uh, maybe start creating some scene stuff to put our character in and see if we can move around in it and uh, 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 see if we can uh, see if we can do some things and we'll come back to the uh, uh, third person thing a little bit later here once I uh, once I figure out first third person switch once I figure some things out so anyway uh, thanks for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button uh, if you really liked it go ahead and subscribe to my channel for updates uh, and uh, I also do minecraft videos so if you're interested in watching uh, watching some let's plays of minecraft you can check those out I have a lot of a uh, lot of different things on my uh, channel uh, and uh, we'll probably be doing uh, maybe some other videos in uh, in another game engine that I have called unity um, so anyway thanks for watching and I will talk to you again another time